Good, good. Good, good. Yes. 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 How fun is that? Distraction training. Goggle down. Yes, alley down. Yes. Chance down. Yes. Distraction training in my own garage. That was the first time I made him sit, uh, sit and move the garage door. And you saw Chance look at that. She moved a little bit. And I was standing behind the cam camera with, um, with the hand up, with the stay. We talked about that uh, last week. And it, it, it has been coming to light that that's a really good command to have on working for you with your dog because what if the dog runs to the other side of the road it's easier for you to keep that dog in a stay hand up than it is for you to ask the dog to navigate traffic we can navigate traffic now those are emergency commands that are actually perfect in the house so it covers all the bases we love it i'm sandra lapalm with the national ptsd service association and we're still having rains after elsa and so just to show you what, in, in any kind, it, it could be a Cat 5 hurricane, and dog trainers up the whole East Coast already either have buildings just like this garage or working with their dogs in the garage. And the nice thing is, when you're giving the dog your full attention, you're activating the, the, the things that help your brain operate in the happiness mode. That's why we use the yes instead of the clicker. It helps you as it helps your dog. And these simple things that you do in your house are always going to be the things that have your dog thinking. And you're listening to me and you're thinking. And these are high energy Belgian Malinois, Belgian Malinois, German Shepherd mix. So then the other thing why I like to be on this, on this, on uh, this uh, little, what I call the stool. It's a bucket that I keep my chicken feet in and I keep it sealed in the garage away from the bugs. As I move around, now they're not going to be able to come this way, so I'll go this way. Chance to have Allie come. Allie, can you scoot in here? Yes, there. That was a good scoot. So it's better if you have, you know, we have some veterans that have met at, at events that live out on farms. And they have five dogs. Of course you live out on a farm. And you want different breed types together because... There are some, certain dogs that are going to patrol the part of your farm that's going to keep the animals from coming after your cows, chickens, sheep, goats, and kitty cats. And then there's going to be some that stay close to the house. And of course, if you have the little terrier dogs, they're going to go after all the mice and the vermin. So five dogs can mean a perfect symbiotic balance on a farm if you're treating them in such a way that you're keeping them trained you're keeping them in the zone, but then it gives you an opportunity to stay in the zone instead of just plunking down the food. And on days like this where I don't have a lot of time, this might have been, is this, you know, what, if I say a command and I want them all to pay attention, this is what you want in your household. This is, you're not going to take all five dogs to uh, Pet Supplies Plus. However, they have uh, an opportunity for you to come in and give them all baths. So if you have your all dogs under control like I do, you can march them right in there and the camera shot is not able for you to pick up. So that if I were walking out, boy, I have them three across because I also have a 10 pound Pomeranian and I keep them over here so he doesn't get trampled. And you guys decide to lay down, that's fine because it's all about our bonding. It's all about them paying attention. It's not about the food. And we're not in the middle of a competition, so I'm not trying to overcorrect anything other than to work my brain, work their brain. Have a great Wednesday. We've got storms going on. All of us have business going on. <laughs> and shout out to Linda Joe and the veterans who are watching. Thank you for tuning in. We supply highly trained service dogs to veterans and first responders. And to be granted a dog, apply at mptsd.org. Know that we train right here in Manatee County. It's a 40-acre facility almost into Mayaka City. Linda, um, she's been training, the, the owner has been training for 40 years.
first in Germany, now here, and uh, I think they've been at that location 20 years. So they're not new to this, we're not new to this. Our first service dog was trained in 2012 and we're rolling out the red carpet with best practices to help you in your experience with your PTSD dog. If you're a professional and you wanna know what oh, something's going on in this property that I manage, give me a call, messenger me, text me, and also know that if you go to our website at ptsd.org and go to the pause app, we have videos there and also just navigate, do, use the search button. You can find quickly the information that helps you with Americans with Disability, Emotional Support Dog, and all the other things that can equip you to do a good job when there's a service dog on your property. And of course, I hear quite often that people are very concerned because there are dogs that are not trained like Allie. That's why we do demonstrations at our events and we'll be at Pet Supply Plus on Fruitville the first and third Saturday of every month from 11 to 2. The demonstration starts at 11 and we'll be there to answer questions and help out till 2 o'clock. And I'm facing this direction. I'm sure on the video you're watching them listening to me looking around and should we do it one more time? I only have two treats left so <laughs> I'm not going to give a command where I can't reward all of them. So the number one problem you can create if you have a pack of dogs and, or just two dogs is, uh, it's like kids on a playground. You, you can't have just one ball. You have to have a treat for all of them, a toy for all of them. <laughs> and and uh, depending on the sort of dogs they are, you know, the appropriate toy. So if the 10 pound Pomeranian we're in the picture right now, the appropriate toy for him is a lot different than what it is for these guys and the treat. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, I'm going to get up and look at the camera real quick in case somebody does have a question. It'll give me a chance to maybe grab a couple more treats. Stay. Cowgirl Chancey Alley, come. Yes. way ahead of me here, aren't they? Come. Yes. Yes. Alan, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. See, I'm holding the treat closer to my face because I really want them looking up at me. Aren't you pretty? You're so pretty. And they're not bitey. They're used to me working with them and they're used to paying attention and they're don't we're paying attention. We're doing such a good job, aren't we? Yes, you are. You're doing a great Yes, 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 yes. And thanks for tuning in. You hear the baby talk. Hopefully, you're going to see in the next couple of days. Stay tuned. I have a special guest. He was a Vietnam dog man. And we talk about that, and we'll talk about that again on live. And I think he's going to be able to be on camera with me live more often. And that is the baby talk voice. Yes, Vietnam veterans know that the Vietnam dogmen didn't, lost, didn't lose a man, and when they were with their dogs, it was always baby talk. And these were very, very ferocious dogs. So they saved a lot of Americans, and they protected a lot of Americans. And those dog handlers all talk to their dogs the same way I'm talking to these. And you'll get to see... My special guest, surprise guest, I think we're going to be on video tomorrow, Bill Rominger, and you're going to hear firsthand him doing the baby talk because that's, it activates something in your brain and it activates something in the dog's brain. That activation is the bonding, the affirmation, and the dedication because their whole life is we want to serve you. So thank you for those of you who have served us. Veterans and first responders, we're here for you at mptsd.org. Good girls. Good girls. <laughs>